I am Narito Suzuki, uh, Chief Operation Officer of Shark Inc. And uh, he is our team leader and our CEO, Dr. Naka Yuto Nakanish. As you see, it's a bipedal robot, and uh, our robot characteristic is high speed and torque. So one of our big problems of humanoids is weakness of robot. And, uh, but uh, he built a, a special motor driver and a water cooling system, and uh, it enables our robot can uh, generate a very big power. Uh, second is uh, it, the robot is very uh, robot can walk very stably. In this DAPA trial, there are a very difficult program to uh, walk stable and uh, on the unstable ter terrain that. Dr. Nishiaki is an algorithm and Urata's uh, power uh, and high motor driver uh, can enable uh, such very sta stable walking. Third is the specialty of integration power. A lot of team members come from the same robotics laboratory from the University of Tokyo and uh, we are almost over as graduate and uh, we share the uh, very uh, wide experience of robot integration and uh, software, both software and hardware, and uh, and have a, a shared a lot of experience. And that experience enables us to develop robots. And I think it's a very important thing to uh, get a win. So we received our atlas in August of this year, and we received it as the result of finishing in the, uh, in the top of the virtual robotics challenge that took place last fall up into this summer. Our DARPA robotics challenge team has been coming and going. We do have a small core, but we're not a team that's set in stone. We have a lot of interns and postdocs and researchers that come and go, contribute a couple of months here and there. And uh, that's been one of the cool things is trying to bring all that together and make it cohesive. And also to be able to say, you know, this is, this is the amount of people that we've had to, to come in and help us out with this and have these different perspectives and new eyes and fresh opinions all the time. We're putting in some crazy hours. Some people are working 80 hours a week. We're working overnight. We're working seven days a week. We're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're going to be in the best shape we can be learning how to handle the dynamics of a hydraulically powered system and the sort of chaos it can introduce into the, into the physics has also been a really interesting challenge for us, how to model those sorts of errors and problems. We always like to call ourselves full slice of the cake people. Uh, every time we make changes, we try and make sure it touches a little bit of everything and tries to bring everything a little bit. Control our robot the same way we controlled our simulated robot in the virtual challenge has been a huge undertaking. And it's coming together, we're getting close. We've said from the beginning that we're not competing against the other teams, we're competing against the obstacle courses. Because that's, that's what it's about. It's, it's being able to challenge those tasks and produce the best results and best research that we can, not necessarily about winning. So that's what's keeping us up at night, is those eight challenges that we're gonna have to take care of. We've been able to track our evolution as a team and track the evolution of the space, um, see how far we've come, remind ourselves how much work we've gotten done, so that we don't lose sight of the goal, because this is a tough, it's a DARPA hard project, and it, it's a little bit overwhelming sometimes. The name of the robot is CHIMP. It stands for uh, Carnegie Mellon Highly Intelligent Mobile Platform. Uh, and it's uh, modeled after a monkey. And the reason why we picked a monkey is that uh, monkeys are very good at getting around on all fours and they're very good at interacting with things in the environment using all four limbs. What makes our robot suited for the DRC task? It's stable, it doesn't need to balance while it's uh, exerting forces on the environment. So we tend to uh, grasp objects that are very heavy and our robot can exert a lot of force without worrying about keeping stable. We've actually developed the robot entirely in-house, so we have uh, just robotics experts in all things mechanical, software, electrical, and that's allowed us to put together an unprecedented robot in just about 12 months, which is a phenomenal uh, effort by the team. 
By uh, limiting the team to a single organization, we basically uh, gain the advantage of, uh, of having a team all in one place and, and all of the efficiency that, that goes with uh, a team that's co-located. Why are we going to win? Okay, because we are picking a radically different concept uh, than the mainstream. So we feel like that concept will uh, allow us to sidestep a lot of the technical problems that others will be battling. And we think that uh, that will compensate for the fact that uh, we are starting from scratch, so to speak, in, in the development itself. I think the, the reward of being involved with a project like uh, DARPA Robotics Challenge is really pushing the forefront of what we can do with robots. I think we're reinventing the meaning of, of what a mobile manipulator is, and the robots that are going to come out of this challenge are going to be doing so much more than just search and rescue in the future. Atlas arrived around the beginning of the school year for us. Uh, I can tell you that many of us planned our vacations around uh, the expected arrival date, and it, it, uh, luckily I wasn't uh, out of town when it arrived. We have a great team that comes from all over MIT. We have people from EECS, which is my home department. We have people from mechanical engineering. We have people from aeronautics and astronautics. We have faculty, we have research staff, we have postdocs. We have graduate students, we have master students, we have undergrads. Our robot's name is Helios. In simulation, when the robot fell over, stopped working, or something broke, it was all very easy. We just shut it back down, restarted things, and everything was, was straightforward. With this 300-pound robot, things are very different. When it swings its arm violently, you better not be standing near it. So it's, it's a whole different ballgame. We had to think a lot about robustness issues for the robot, for the control system. We did a lot of interesting dynamics and control work to make the simulator work well. There have been a few differences, although I've been happy with how few the differences have been. The thing that probably keeps most of us up at night is reliability. So we're able to do a lot of these tasks um, to our satisfaction in the laboratory, um, but we're not doing these tests outdoors in Miami right now. We have to pick up this whole operation and put it in a truck, take it to Florida, unpack it, and put it all back together again without breaking anything. And as you can imagine, there are just hundreds of pieces to what we're doing here. We have some of the best students in the world helping us with the project. We are in it to win it. We're very confident in our approach. And we think that at the end of 2014, when the competition happens for real, we're going to do very well. RoboSimian is a system that actually comes out of work we've been doing at JPL for a while in what we refer to as limbed robots. So limbed robots uh, are based on the idea that rather than legs and arms, that we actually are going to create a limb that is capable of either manipulation or mobility. And this more general design, while it's not optimized for any one job, is sufficient for a huge number of jobs. And instead of these difficult environments on other planets or in space, we're looking at the difficult environments on Earth with RoboSimian. One of the interesting aspects of our design is, is its modularity. We use the same actuator design at every joint. So while we have 28 actuators plus an additional two for the casters on the back, so 30 actuators on the entire robot, they're all the same design. Um, and this makes it very easy to build up and maintain from a system's point of view. The strengths of our team both here at JPL and at Caltech and at UC Santa Barbara and at Stanford is that we have an enormous amount of experience with robotics that are very similar to what we're trying to build. We also are a, probably one of the smallest teams competing in the DRC. We're very streamlined and by doing so everybody gets a tremendous amount of ownership. We set out to build a very deliberate robot. For that reason, uh, RoboSimian is, unlike a humanoid system, entirely predicated around the idea that it's going to be stable at all times. It's basically the tortoise relative to the hare. 
And it'll be very interesting to see how those two ends of the robotic solution spectrum play out in the, in the competition. Our design will win the robotics challenge because we're practical. We know our limits. Uh, we're going after what we can do. What JPL has built is a robot that can interact in a human world, but is not constrained by human design. The company Track Labs has done a lot of work in robotics and automation and artificial intelligence, and that's really played a role in bringing this together. Track Labs is a special team because of our small size. We have a very small set of core programmers that are working on this robot. Everybody knows almost all aspects of the software, and we're very flat hierarchically. We are really leveraging. Uh, the sort of the control system that we already have on the robot from the manufacturers, the Boston Dynamics. We're trying to focus on the tasks rather than trying to focus on the concepts. The strategy uh, we've chosen is one of sticking to the basics and focusing on simple movements that the robot can do and uh, getting those correct and perfect. There's a lot of excitement at Track Labs about this project and there's a lot of uh, excitement in the community at large. Uh, both for us and the other Houston, Texas team, uh, Johnson Space Center. Uh, and so Track Labs has been getting a lot of uh, positive feedback from our other customers here in the oil and gas industry. The main reward for me is working in something that's cutting edge. Uh, may not be in terms of technology, uh, may not be in terms of the concepts and algorithms that we are implementing, but in terms of the challenge and the applications. Track Labs will win the robotics challenge with some luck and um, hopefully with a good user interface that focuses on sending only crucial data between the user and the robot. Our team is REX, Worcester Polytechnic Institute Robotics Engineering C-Squad. Oh, we got our atlas in July of this year, July 2013. We were the first team to receive an atlas. And we got it because we were ready uh, very quickly. So once we got the uh, notice that we'd be getting atlas, we, we scrambled and, and hurried up and got everything in place to get ready for it. We've never seen anything like this before and we had to completely evaluate and figure out all the joints, the controls, how, how everything acts and behaves where things may go wrong and just get to know the robot. That took about the first two months of just getting used to it, getting the feel of it, redesigning our software to fit inside the robot. Our team is working immense hours. We have close to 30, 35 people uh, working on some aspect of this challenge. Uh, that robot and the lab are in use 24 seven. I'd have to thank our partners, Carnegie Mellon, uh, who've been great contributors as well. They really bring a lot to our project. WPI introduced the very first robotics engineering program, undergraduate robotics engineering program uh, in the nation six years ago. So our robotics focus on our campus has been accelerating since then. Our team is special in my opinion because we get students who are enthusiastic about robots from day one. I think our team is going to do very well for a number of reasons. For one, we were the only track C team to make it this far. Our kids have the right stuff. It's a real gritty team. We're good at making stuff that really works. And we've worked very, very hard. We received Atlas in August of this year, and since then we've been carrying up a very fast pace to try to port everything that we've done for the virtual challenge to the physical robot. Team Trooper is a team consisting of Lockheed Martin Advanced Technology Labs, the University of Pennsylvania, and the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. The team is working very long hours to try to get ready for the challenge in December. It's amazing how tightly they've come together in the last few months. Everything is keeping me up at night. 
<laughs> while preparing for the challenge. There's a lot to get done. It's an amazingly ambitious challenge, and we have a lot to do still. We're taking an approach where we're not assuming that the operator is fully teleoperating the system, and the robot is not attempting to accomplish anything fully autonomously either. I've been involved in robotics, at least on a personal level, all of my life. Uh, it's one of the few jobs where someone may have a hobby that you can actually make money off of as a career, and that's, that's wonderful, and I'm very excited about that. I've always dreamed of working with robots, and working with Atlas is an incredible opportunity. 